Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 413, uh, featuring my take on Pathfinder Kingmaker. Now this is a game that just released back in September. It's by Alcat Games, a Russian studio, and it's a really fantastic game if you are a fan of those old uh, Infinity Engine games like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. Now this is the first ever uh, computer role-playing game set in the Pathfinder universe. I have uh, more to say about that later. Uh, but overall, I think it's a fantastic game. It's not perfect. I'll get into some of the uh, flaws as I see them. Uh, but overall, I think it's a fantastic game and well worth your time, especially if you are a fan of the aforementioned <laughs> Infinity Engine games. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Pathfinder Kingmaker. And here we go with my review of Pathfinder Kingmaker. This is a game by Alcat Games, a studio out of Russia. And I gotta tell you, friends, this is probably the best, or the closest uh, approximation to those old Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, the, the old Infinity, and Bioware's Infinity engine games. I've played in a long time, but it's even more than that. They've <laughs> added some more mechanics onto it that uh, I think are pretty incredible. Uh, there are some things, uh, it's not all great stuff, I mean there are definitely some negatives here uh, that we'll get into as well, but uh, I'll just say starting off, if you're looking for that uh, game to play over the <laughs> your winter break or whatever, you <laughs> you know, you need some free time because uh, this game is addictive as hell. Uh, but if you have some time to play, you really want to sync it into a good computer role-playing game, great uh, mechanics. If you want to play the uh, a game set in the Pathfinder universe as opposed to the old Dungeons and Dragons uh, style games, I think you'll find a lot to like here. Uh, so anyway, let me uh, stop here and I'll go to my uh, uh, new game screen, show you what it's like to create a character, and I'll play a little bit of that and then we'll come back here to some of the later game and I'll show you what the, the kingdom management and all the other goodies uh, look like. Uh, so anyway, I'll see you in one minute. All right, so it was more like half an hour. <laughs> you know, this is like the one more turn, the five more minutes. This is insane. I, I mean, I sh probably shouldn't show you this game because uh, this might actually break up some friendships and <laughs> some marriages. <laughs> I mean, whoa. Uh, you got to be careful with this. It is addictive. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. I'll create a new game here. And I'll say this... Uh, uh, I'll say this at the outset, there's a lot of complexity here, there's a lot of sophistication, a lot of stuff to read, uh, to consider, uh, to study even. You might actually want to uh, look at some tutorials if you that kind of person. I, I kind of just prefer to learn as I go. And I'll try to tell you some stuff as we go that um, I wish I had known before I jumped into this. Uh, but I also have to be careful because there, there's some puzzles and some things I think you'd have more fun discovering <laughs> on your own rather than just seeing, uh, seeing them in a, in a video. Uh, so I'll try to be careful not to, to do that. But uh, anyway, let me just jump in here. We've got the difficulty uh, options. And this is a game where you probably do want to spend some time. I wouldn't recommend just going into normal mode right away because uh, there's a few annoyances that you can avoid if you uh, customize your difficulty settings. I mean, you want it to be challenging, uh, but you might not. I don't... You know, I guess one of the, my nitpicky things. Let me let me just shut up and show you. <laughs> uh, this is what I'm talking about. There's an option here uh, called Remove Negative Effects on Rest. And so, <laughs> click yes on this one. Trust me, this will annoy the fire out of you if you do not change that. Uh, so unless you are just hardcore and you have to have the uh, the exact rules or whatever for Pathfinder. Uh, go ahead and change that. Let me just say too, Pat, if you don't know what Pathfinder is, I've been trying to get the figure out a succinct way to put this, uh, but basically it's kind of a fork off of Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. Uh, there was a company called Paizo or P uh, Piazo, <laughs> not sure how to pronounce it, P I P A I Z O, and they were making some modules and some books and some magazines related to uh, D and D, which is the Coast official uh, officially compatible products. 
Uh, Wizards of the Coast did their own thing with 4.0 and 5.0 D&D. Uh, these guys didn't want to follow them into that abyss, so they just decided to, you know, fork off and keep going and create their own lore and their universe. But it's pretty much uh, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 with some innovations uh, and some changes. But if you played the D&D uh, 3.5, you, you won't find this uh, hard to get into. Uh, that's about as best I can do with the history behind that. That's some licensing stuff I won't get into here. Uh, anyway, we want to say yes on the remove negative effects, and you might even want to say dead companions rise after combat. Now, I prefer to leave that off because I kind of like this death's door. I think this is a pretty good compromise. Uh, so basically what happens if a party member loses, uh, they go down to zero health hit points instead of just being wiped from the game and you have to reload. Uh, they're kind of in this purgatory-like state where they're a little more vulnerable. Uh, you have to go back to town, rest up, and it's, it's just enough of a nuisance where you kind of feel like <laughs> you've been properly disciplined for dying. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, not that bad. Uh, so some other things here that you might consider. They kind of nerfed the enemies a little bit. You notice they got critical hits here on weak. Uh, I think there's another option here. Enemy stats have been moved to somewhat easier Damage to parties only at 0.8 or 80%. Uh, so there's a few little things there you might want to change if you don't like the idea of uh, being uh, the enemies being nerfed. I'm kind of hesitant to change it, though, because obviously these developers, the designers, they're the ones that made the game. They think this is... Maybe they thought it was a little too hard at 100%, so they have... <laughs> maybe you should go with the nerfing. <laughs> As I'm just going to stick that there. Stick. I'll just go with what they say is normal that's fine uh the other stuff i don't see anything else here i would necessarily want to change i'm going to turn the tutorial off uh, let's see i definitely don't mess with this party speed this is annoying enough as it is <laughs> so, so i would leave that off so let's just this looks good just make that one change go to next uh now here we have our uh you can go with the pre-made character but i mean what's the fun of that uh, sometimes it's okay to create to go with one of these pre-made characters just to get a feel for the game. Kick the tires a little bit, come back, create your own character. Uh, I'm just going to say create my own character because that's what I. <laughs> I mean, what I mean isn't it's an RPG, right? The, the half the fun is creating your own character and making about a million little decisions. Uh, the first one is your portrait, portraits, and you know a decent selection. It's not all that impressive but you can click this little uh i don't know little bust little, little dummy icon if you want to upload your own portrait i probably should have had that ready <laughs> i don't know if i have a portrait handy uh for that purpose so i'll just go with uh let's see yeah, th yeah this one i thought looks pretty good and now we get to pick our race and again this is this would probably be easier for you if you're familiar with Pathfinder or the other D&D &D games. There's nothing really surprising here. These are all fairly uh, traditional races at this point, but you can see that they all have various uh, bonuses and some have penalties. Some are better for, for some classes than others. And uh, As usual, sometimes it's fun to play against type. So yeah, dwarves. You don't see probably don't see a lot of dwarf or uh, half-orc mages, but yeah. You know, why not be different, right? Uh, for our purposes, I want to go with the uh, the elf. And uh, I, I'll make an elf wizard. But here I just select the elf. And, uh, one of the things I like about this elf is he's got elven weapon familiarity. Uh, so even though I'm going to make him a magic user, I kind of like the idea of him having a longbow. <laughs> just, or a composite longbow, even better instead of just the uh, crappy uh, light crossbow or short bow uh, that most people get. Uh, yeah, composite longbow. So I'll just go with that. Because, uh, you know, he could be firing bows when he's not using his uh, spells. And there are even some spells that go along with uh, the archery, make the archery better. Uh, and this other stuff, you can get in here and mess around with the... <laughs> mess around with the hairstyle. Woo! Uh, mess around with the hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, that's a nice... Uh, that looks okay. Let's make him a left-handed. 
left-handed guy. I'm a left. I'm a lefty. Now you can't make a beard on the elf, I suppose. So that is one major drawback. <laughs> the elven, elven class, or elven race. Sorry. Uh, and then we get our classes, and you know, here's where there's you kind of get overwhelmed with the options. I mean, we have wizard, sorcerer, magus, magus, whatever the hell that is, uh, inquisitor, druid. I mean, these are all the spell casting classes, and then sort of like the, the in between is like the alchemist. Who uh, there's an NPC that you meet as an alchemist a little bit later, uh, who I think is a really cool character. So you might not want to create an alchemist. And I would say the same thing with a barbarian. You meet a alchemist, barbarian, a bard, uh, a sort of a tank-like fighter, an inquisitor, and a ranger. I think that's all. Then you meet a rogue uh, wizard combo. So those are the NPCs you're probably going to be playing with. So if you're worried about not duplicating something, uh, I, I don't think there's a straight-up wizard in the game. So you might be pretty cool with that or a sorcerer. Uh, but if you don't care, I mean, there's plenty of options, so it doesn't really make all that big a difference. <laughs> if you have two uh, fighters in your party, who cares? Uh, and then even on top of the that decision, now we have these subclasses. So you can do the straight-up wizard, we've got the arcane bummer, and then we have the Thessalonian specialist, <laughs> or the scroll savant. That sounds kind of interesting. Some wizards consider scrolls a natural extension of their magical abilities. Well, you know, some wizards do consider that, but <laughs> I don't think that is me. I think I'll just go the straight up wizard. Ah, so you can get in to the minutia here. Look at, I mean, look at the minutia. Incredible. And look at this. Levels 1 all the way to 20. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, and if that wasn't enough complexity, uh, one of the cool things about this game is you don't have to stick with this wizard. You know, I could do a level of wizard next turn. I could say, what the hell? You know, uh, fighter. Give me a level of this, a level of that. It could be like this sort of a la carte uh, character. You know, it's usually not recommended, but hey, it's your game. You know, do what you want. Uh, now we get to choose a specialist. And I think there is an option here. Yeah, Universalist. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, so the Universalist, I guess, is the, the specialist school for those who don't want to commit. It's like the general studies of, uh, of wizardry school, wizardry college. Uh, illusions, evocations, enchantment. Now, this is one of the problems with a game like this. You know, obviously, with a tabletop game, uh, the DM, the game master, whatever you want to call this, <laughs> uh, him or her, uh, they could probably just give you some advice. Like, you probably don't want to do that for my campaign. There's not going to be a lot of uh, opportunities for that school or whatever. Uh, and keep in mind, most of this has to do with uh, a resistance. So unless you're casting the stuff on monsters, resistance might not even be, be an issue. Uh, however, one of the cool things about this is each one gives you a little uh, ability uh, that the other ones don't have. So I mean, the replay value here is just off the off the charts. You know, you could be you could have what ten different wizards, <laughs> and just chick picking a different specialist school uh, can actually make a fairly big difference on the on the gameplay. Now, there's one here that I thought was pretty cool is the Conjuration. Uh, I like to summon monsters. It's just kind of uh, what I like to do with magic. Uh, and there's another, yeah, right here. So if you look at this, if you look down the uh, list here, they get a uh, acid dart. As a standard action, you can unleash an acid dart, targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Now the acid dart does 1d6 points of acid damage plus one for every two wizards, uh, wizard levels you possess. You can use this ability a number of times. Uh, so that actually sounds pretty cool to me. I wanted to give that a try. Uh, you know, in real life, uh, <laughs> I love darts. <laughs> uh, whenever I go to a bar, everybody wants to play pool. I'm always gravitating towards the dartboard, so it kind of fits my personality. And then I'm going to see, too, if I can buff that up, because it's an acid uh, ability. So anyway, got our school. Now we get a, uh, looks like an arcane bond. Now uh, this is where it gets awesome. Okay. Uh, so you get, you know, the wizard has a little familiar, a little pet, uh, kind of like a pet on, uh, a pet 
you kind of telekinetically linked to or whatever, telepathically linked to. Basically, it looks like what it amounts to is, is a various bonus, like some give you a will power bonus, <laughs> some hit point bonus. <laughs> I don't think it scales either, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh, let me show you this. Now, you could go with a cat. You got a centipede. You got a chicken. I think there's a duck. But really, folks, there is only one choice. And that choice, of course, is the rat. <laughs> oh, yes. Rat familiar. I love it. I don't even care what the... I get a bonus on fortitude. Really, you should get a bonus across the board if you go with the rat, because, I mean, rats are just that awesome. And hopefully, I'm hoping I'll be able to keep summoning him, killing him, resummoning, killing him. <laughs> that would be, that'd be a fun game for me just in and of itself. But, but anyway... So I'm already loving this character. I haven't even gotten uh, to play him yet, but just having a rat familiar, you know, wow, I know that's the rat choice for me. Okay, we get some ability points to allocate. Uh, there's a green circle here. I mean, you don't have to be a brainiac, a D&D <laughs> expert to know you. You probably want to have a smart wizard. You want a bunch of intelligence points. This gives you bonus spells, makes your stuff work better. So, of course, uh, after that, I would think, since again, I, he is an elf, I do want him using that long will. Probably put some points in dexterity. I don't like the idea of a negative one modifier on my constitution. Uh, call me nuts, I just don't like that idea. So I at least don't want to be penalized for a bad constitution. Uh, but I'll go ahead and stick all the rest of my points there. Uh, now this is kind of an interesting choice here, so... Most of these games, if you're the party leader, the main character, you will be having to interact. You'll be like the go-to, the spokesperson for the party. So it might be worth pumping a little bit into charisma just so people don't think you're disgusting. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to forget that and just put that extra point in Constitution. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be alive than persuasive. I don't find corpses very persuasive. <laughs> All right, over here, what have we got? Uh, some skills. So they don't overwhelm you with skills. A lot of this, there'll be a lot of checks. It'll say, well, if your perception's high enough, you'll see this secret trap or, or the secret uh, treasure or trickery. You might detect a trap better. Uh, the green dots, again, kind of give you some ideas. And I kind of gravitate towards the idea of having a few scores that are really high and just having a bunch of low scores. So I notice that my... Knowledge in Arcana is already up to, to 7, so it might be worth pumping that up a little bit. Only unless we go 1 point. Uh, same with the uh, Knowledge of the World. Uh, knowledge, or Lore of Religion, okay. Nature Lore. And Perception. I think Perception's great because it's all kinds of little secret traps and, and alcoves and niches and the, you guys know me i do not want to leave a treasure behind <laughs> if there's some gold somewhere i want that gold okay we are going to next now we get into some even more complicated choices we got to choose abilities here now point blank shot this will go with my archery ability uh the spell focus is kind of you know i don't know really what i think about this Again, it depends on the kind of spells you're casting, right? If you're casting something on a monster, that monster might resist the spell. So if you want to curse a monster, for example, it might resist it. Uh, but since I'm going Conjuration, I don't really anticipate this being a big deal. Uh, I don't think I'll be casting things on monsters. I want to summon monsters more and if, or cast something on myself. And so I'm just going to skip the skill focus, even though it puts that green dot on it. Uh, same thing with armor. You know, as a wizard, I want to cast Mage Armor on myself. I don't want to just waste a, a skill or waste a feat on that. And plus, you find all kinds of bracers and things that don't require you to have a light armor proficiency. Uh, another really interesting thing about this game is all of these party-based feats, which I don't know if that's new to this game, but, you know, obviously uh, uh, some of the other games have uh, abilities shared across a party, but this one really seems to take it to the, <laughs> to the next level. Uh, we've got coordinated maneuvers, coordinated defense. Uh, there's a uh, couple about casting. Let's see somewhere here. Yeah, shielded caster. So your allies cover you while you cast complicated spells. So if you got um, 
<clears throat> somebody else that has this feat, they're close to you or adjacent to you, then you both get uh, a pretty nice perk uh, on that shielded caster. I think it's a constant or competence bonus on your concentration checks. And uh, then you even get some stuff like if they have a shield or a heavy shield, you can get more. Uh, I don't really anticipate being up to the close to the front lines, <laughs> so that might not be as useful. Uh, but really, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, feats to choose from. Some are kind of meaningless. I was kind of leaning towards this elemental focus, though. Uh, what that'll do, I right, look over here at the acid. It'll give me a, a little bit better saving throws against spells uh, for my acid. And since I do anticipate using that acid dart, I was thinking maybe this would be a good choice. Uh, so I'm just going to try it out. We'll see how it works. Uh, and then I get my... Um, Let's see if I've chosen that. You know, I get my wizard bonus feat. Uh, so I could go greater uh, elemental focus. Let's look at this. Uh, choose an energy type to which you have already applied. Any spells you cast are very hard to resist. Uh, so I could double up on that or go with something else. Maybe choose a different element. So maybe you want uh, acid and fire. There are a lot of trolls in this game. So it might be nice to have the fire one as well. Now, or I could do some meta magic. Uh, let's see, combat casting, that's just a concentration bonus. You know, it might be worth it. You know, I haven't had a lot of trouble getting uh, interrupted, but, you know, what the heck. Yeah, you know, I'll go ahead and get that. It's probably not the best feat, but <laughs> I don't want to spend all day here uh, carefully considering every detail. Actually, I kind of want to do that, but <laughs> I want this video to be like an hour long, not 12 hours long. Okay, now we're up to uh, opposition school. So if I chose the, my school was uh, Conjuration, so now I have to choose a few schools where I'll actually uh, take some penalties, I suppose. So I'm going to go Necromancy. That sounds kind of evil. I kind of want to be a good character. Uh, the other one, though, is kind of tough. I don't know. Like, which school? <laughs> I don't really have a list of the spells here handy, so I don't know what I'm really doing. So I'll just click Divination. That sounds more like a cleric thing to me anyway. Uh, and then I get to choose some spells, and since I had that incredible intelligence, oh, let me tell you, <laughs> I get a lot of spells, oh my god. Obviously, Mage Armor, that's kind of a no-brainer. And again, since I kind of focus so much on Acid, I'll go with a Corrosive Touch. I want to summon stuff. So I probably want to just pick up all the Conjuration spells since I, since I did do that. Well, let's see what else we have here. Any other conjurations? Not seeing some. I guess here you can see where the opposition schools are coming into play. Uh, let's see what else might be useful. Uh, sleep's a, you know, sleep is generally pretty useful, especially at low level. Uh, magic missile. Sometimes that works when nothing else works. <laughs> and then I got hurricane bow. Wow, what's this? Any arrow fired from a bow or crossbow you are carrying when the spell is cast deals damage as if one size larger than it actually is. So, 1d8, I do 2d6 instead. Sounds pretty cool. Alright, now I get to choose a voice. Let's see. Oh boy, here we go. This will hurt! Let's shake a leg! Burn! Slice! Behead! I'll carve my name onto your flesh. Hmm. This is my path. Let us bide our Of course, time. one of the things you might consider, too, is you're probably going to be hearing the same set of voice clips about 10,000 times. <laughs> so, you might just say none, uh, just to save yourself some repetition, but I kind of like oh, the madman. I mad see man. his Get it off me. I'm going to go madman. Uh, birthday. I don't know if this makes any difference or not, but I'll make it my actual birthday because, uh, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Why not? Oh, I gotta pick a name for our little man here. How about Madagascar? <laughs> uh, choose alignment. Uh, so this does make a difference. You, you're always kind of shifting around depending on the choices you make. Let's see, I don't know how big a difference it makes in the game world. I guess it might affect some of the dialogue options you get. Uh, 
definitely makes a difference in terms of the buildings you can construct later on. So I think most games kind of assume you're going to go lawful good, or as I like to say, waffle good. Uh, so I'll go ahead Forwards. and pick that. No, no, backwards. Uh, backwards! All right, what else do we have? I think we're good. Acid dart, acrobatics. You can see all the cool stuff you get. Level one. <laughs> All right, let's get her. Let's get her started here. I don't think I can pick my spells. Sometimes it lets you pick the spells in your spell book, but I don't. I don't see that here. So let's go ahead and get into it. Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori sword lord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. There's a nice little bookend to start us off with. I like that the game doesn't go on and on with lengthy cutscenes. Like a game that gets going pretty quick. Still got a little Where bit more to go. This is taking forever. They didn't even say what this was for. Just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Eldori anyway, rich folk? So I don't know how well you can hear this audio, but the voice acting is really good. Uh, very professional. Uh, this is, by the way, Zamiri. One of my favorite characters. I always go with her. Uh, she's a barbarian, but let's just continue on. If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Eldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners <laughs> pretty quick. Old her teach you. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Yeah, you can probably see why I like Amiri. Uh, she plays just like I do. <laughs> Hush! Quiet! They're coming! And there's Lindsay, our bard. Okay. Very nice graphics, I think. A lot of detail. Look at that rug. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori, and this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restal. Welcome to my mansion. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless. Exactly what Restoff needs. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little flattery to start off with. I'm liking this. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevoy's border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory. And while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Thank you. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the stolen lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Rustoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. So really, this setup is not all that different than Pool of Radiance and the, if you remember, Flan from back in the day, or Flan, and Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, <laughs> the considers Stag himself Lord. the rightful <laughs> owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head. And you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? All right. Straightforward enough. Well, let's see. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on all these options. So. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage. The unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. Good old Yosef. 
All right, so like hey, I my name's oh, Lindsay. This, Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So, shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? Yeah, so this is Lindsay the bard. She'll be telling our story as we go along. Now, this is why I'm thinking you probably don't want to create a bard, because uh, you probably want to have a uh, Lindsay in your party. I don't know how well two bards would work. Let's see. I'll try to skip through this. Likewise. And... How do you feel about this oh, tart dip? Work. I should have, you know what the trouble, and then I thought... <laughs> I don't want to spoil all this for you right. when you get around to playing it. Uh, okay. So we could stick around, talk to all these people, but instead I want to just get on to the, get on with it. Take a look here at some of these, uh, the interface. Uh, so there's our journal. Looks good. There's our character sheet. You can see the spells that they put in here for you. I don't know if I like uh, these spells. Um, I actually kind of want to summon monster spell instead of this snowball. I guess I'll swap that out there. And I think that's about it for me. Uh, the cantrips, you don't have to memorize those. And you could even get in here and mess with your hot bars. I think there's even another one here. It's like a double... <laughs> You know, obviously I don't have enough uh, skills and spells yet uh, to worry about that. There's my spell book if you want to pull that up. Got my abilities here. You can, Some of the stuff you can toggle on and off. Now, of course, the thing that I'm most concerned about is getting that rat out of the pack. Rat familiar. Do I need to say more? There he is. Look at that rat. <laughs> Nice, big, fat one. Mmm! Yes. Man, it looks like they gave me some scrolls and a couple of weapons, so... All this stuff is pretty straightforward. I dare say if you've played Baldur's Gate or anything like that, you should be right at home here. And I think that we're going to get to some combat pretty much right away. We'll see. Uh, the loading screens are a bit of an issue with this game, I, I have to say. Not so much here at the beginning, but I'll say more later. Help! Help! <laughs> What's going on? Is this a joke? <laughs> Get out of my room. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Is this a joke? No time for jokes. The mansion's under attack. Oh, there's always time for jokes, Lindsay! Villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers, or we'll all be cut down one by one. Kind of having flashbacks to Neverwinter Nights. Wow! There goes Lindsay. And here comes my first victim. <laughs> okay, I love it. We didn't waste a lot of time. We're already in combat. Hell yeah. Okay, so I probably don't want to try to cast a mage armor right now since this guy's just about to be in my face. And you notice it automatically paused. I can unpause and just have the real-time flow or there's a, I forget what they call it, but there's like a sort of a slow motion mode where I can hold the shift of the space bar down and it'll just, I can, it'll move a little bit and anytime I can stop and do something else. Okay, so what I want to do for my opening move uh, I think I might go ahead and just hit this guy with an acid dart. So you could do it like that. Just click here, click on him. Now, or if you right click, it'll put it in an auto cast or auto use ability slot. You only, as far as I can tell, you only get one of those. It'll just cast that over and over again until you turn it off. Uh, so, you know, it's fairly uh, basic. There's not a lot of uh, nitty gritty AI options here. You can't program to say uh, quaff a potion if you get down to half health. You don't have that kind of uh, functionality here, but uh, this works. Uh, so you know what? I'm just going to just see if I can hit the guy with a dart. Uh, so let's just try that. Hit the space bar to resume. I can see there it's, it's going to take one second <laughs> to cast. <laughs> I don't think this guy is just going to hang around and let me throw darts at him. So let's just see what happens. Go casting. <gasps> Boom! I hit him. <sighs> Let me just pause it again, because I want to show you this. It's really cool. Okay, so over here on the right, I've got basically all the stuff that would be going on in a tabletop game. I've got the initiative checks, the rolls. Uh, it's easy to ignore this, but if you 
if you pay attention to it, you can actually learn quite a bit. Uh, so you can see here, uh, the rolls, when I try to hit him with that dart, roll to 16. He's got a very low armor class, just 7, so of course I hit him. Uh, you can see the damage you're doing here. Only one damage. <laughs> Not all that impressive. You know, you think it, 1d6 equals 1 acid, so I don't even know if my... Uh, elemental, looks like my elemental special specialization is not kicking in on this dart. I don't, not sure if that's uh, by design or not. But anyway, let's try a uh, corrosive touch and see if it kicks in there. So that's going to take 2.4 seconds. Ah, oh, missed it. Damn it! I only get one of those two. Oh, never mind. He's dead anyway. It looks like what happened there did I have uh, for some reason I have this corrosive touch on two different buttons what's up with that I don't know why I have the the second one there acid splash I'm starting to wonder if this is a little bug here too you know they, they do say this game does have some bugs and glitches in it okay now we got to get into the the loot and <sighs> You guys know me. I'm like obsessive about loot. I cannot stand leaving loot behind. I just said no loot left behind. <laughs> uh, the problem is I uh, it takes it actually factors in the strength and the weight of stuff. So it's very easy to get too much stuff on you. You won't be able to move around efficiently. You'll be encumbered. Uh, so what you can do, you can just say to heck with it and just drop a bunch of stuff when you go to leave the zone. Uh, or you could take a minute to look and see the value so it weighs 25 pounds and only it's only worth 25 gold you see there at the bottom uh, of this thing so it's a, basically a gold a pound kind of how i'm thinking about it so <clears throat> i don't want to carry around anything unless i'm going to use it or it's worth more than it's uh <laughs> than it's weight <laughs> uh, if i hold the tab key down i can see if there's any little chests around that i might be able to notice uh, it doesn't look like it uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cast my mage armor. And I'll bring up my character sheet so I can see what kind of uh, AC I'm getting. So that you can see it factored in my plus four for the mage armor, plus a dexterity bonus of three. So this guy's not a bad uh, AC for somebody that's basically naked, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll be able to find some bracers and things of that sort later. Make that even better. Okay, there we go. So Lindsay runs off that way. Where will Matt go? Will Matt follow Lindsay or will he continue to search for loot? I think you know the answer to that question. All right, we got a chest here, and this chest has a, a longbow in there. That's pretty good. So you see, that only weighs three pounds, but it's worth 19 gold. Kuching. Oh, what is this? A bloodstone. And just some straight up coins. Always get the cold hard cash. All right, so let's compare the light crossbow with the long bow. Uh, looks like the only difference is a slight uptick in critical hit. So this is 20 times 3 on a critical hit versus 19 to 20 times 2 with a light crossbow. So it probably won't make a huge difference, but, you know, you can use it. Why not? Every little bit helps. <laughs> uh, plus he's an elf, you know. <laughs> He gets offended if you give him a light crossbow. Come on. All right, Lindsay. What are you doing? We got someone. We have to help. Look, they're running. Get them. And what shall I do with this one? We'll finish him later. He won't get away. So here we go. A little bit more complicated battle now. Yeah, see, now it took away my little... Spell. So this is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> uh, who knows? Okay, let's see what we got here. Why don't we throw a snowball? You know what? I'll tell you what. I'm going to do my summon monster. Let's try that out. Seven seconds! Okay, so they'll probably ding me a couple times before this summon happens, but it's like they're going to go for Lindsay anyway. All right. Boom, one's dead already before I even summon the thing? Come on, slow down, Lindsay. Oh, <laughs> well, I feel you're so useful in that fight. I don't even want to think about it. 
Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed, ready to lead you to victory. <laughs> You know, these developers, these writers, you can see how they're kind of trying to provoke you with this Tartuccio guy. They, they wanted to be annoying, but at the same time humorous. I think they nailed it. He seemed like a character out of The Princess Bride to me. Lady Jamandi is holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. Speaking of dummies, take this ring. Quiet now. <laughs> So that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. <laughs> yes, Tartuccio. I want to defend you. That is my top priority. Okay, where is this ring? Now, one of the nice things about this game is that you actually do have a little bit of auto-sorting. You know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but uh, <laughs> some, of the, some of the recent games I played did not have this, and believe me, it is uh, better. It's more important than you'd think to have some ways to auto-sort. So, and I got this ring. Gives me a plus one bonus to the armor class. Drag it on, on. <laughs> Drag it on, on. <laughs> and you can see, boom, it did boost it up. Plus one straight-up bonus to the AC. Not bad. You'll also notice I have some new party members now. We've got Tertuccio. He's what? A sorcerer. We have the bard. And we have me. And I'm actually the one with the best AC at the moment. Which is kind of unbelievable. Uh, the bard will have some abilities. And then we've what got... Uh, let's see what she got. There we go. She's got a ins uh, Inspire Courage. And a couple of scrolls and... Of course, the sorcerer has his stuff. I'm just seeing if he's got maybe a uh, a mage armor. I don't see it on him. He's got some pots. Okay, so now it gets a little more complicated because we've got three people. We can select our formation. Again, very uh, straight out of uh, the Infinity Engine, Engine games. Probably doesn't make a huge difference at this point how we are arranged. <laughs> uh, you hit the backspace to grab them all. Yeah, this is any useful loot on him? Yeah, what, is, what is this? Incense! It's basically vendor trash, but it only weighs 0. 0.05 pounds and it's worth two gold. Step, step, step! Yes, and we must check for loot. Uh, a book. I guess the book's not two pounds, 12 gold. Okay, old maps. Basically just gold. It is like those old um, Infinity Engine games in that you do sometimes have to get your guys to walk all the way to the exit. As far as I know, you can't just instantly load the next zone, even if you've explored it. Yeah, some more coins. Good, good, good. Alright, now we got three assassins, or rogues, hover over these guys to see. I, don't, I haven't inspected them yet, so I don't know what they're have any weaknesses but you can look at their stats I mean you could really just get sort of crazy with the mechanics here if you so desired I want to go ahead and just start playing with some of the toys <laughs> so we could turn on our inspire courage uh, looks like that's gonna give me morale and save bonuses competence bonuses those are pretty pretty powerful and it's gonna be a, the 13 means I guess that's 13 rounds so that'll just keep ticking down. I have to remember to turn that off. I don't think it automatically turns off after the battle. And let's see what we want Tartuccio to be doing. He could be demoralizing people. <laughs> he seems to be pretty good at that. Uh, we could be casting magic missiles. Of course, uh, we have to rest. If we use all this stuff up, we'll have to rest to be able to use it again. So it might not be the smartest move. But, you know, what the heck. Go ahead and throw some uh, magic missiles into the mix, and I want him to. Let's try the acid splash with. Uh, see if that bit, see if that'll trigger that elemental bonus. Okay, I want to show you this the sort of the halfway combat. Uh, so it's shift and space. So if you see what's happening there, hold the shift key down, space. So I could just let up any minute. At least in theory. Let's see. There it goes. Maybe we're not doing that right. <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. So it's shift and space, and you can make it go just as much as you want. Let's watch this acid splash. Okay, it did hit. Let's see, still just doing the one damage. So I don't know, you know? Let's go back to this. I wonder if this is a bug. Because I definitely selected that, uh... I thought I did, the elemental... Yeah, elemental focus acid. Okay, so all that's doing... I guess it's working correctly. So it just makes it harder to resist. Which I'm not sure if that's the same as missing. I, don't, I think that's a totally separate thing. So I guess it is working as uh, <laughs> advertised. <laughs> I don't see anything there about it hitting. Let's see. Attacks with an acid splash. I think that only works on the... I think the only thing that matters there is my dexterity. Yeah, so this doesn't even factor in like the resistance to it. So maybe that elemental focus, maybe that'll come in later if I get more acid abilities. Uh, we'll see. So, yeah, that's not even affected by the... If you look at that acid dart, it says not affected by target spell resistance. Uh, the corrosive touch, though, should be... My acid splash isn't, so it's too bad I can't do this uh, corrosive touch where I can see if it's actually working or not. But <laughs> I'm actually a little bit more concerned that I'm down to 4 out of 7 health. Uh, I hope I don't die. Yeah, and you, you can see sometimes it gets, switches into the slow motion thing. I haven't figured out what's causing that yet, but you see he's like, like barely moving. Just seems to kind of randomly do that. I find if I click out of the window and back in it seems to work so it's a little glitchy nothing that's going to uh, you know totally ruin it uh, my friend uh, Gotrix was saying sometimes it has glitched badly enough on him where he had to reload I haven't had any corrupted saves or anything too tragic but it's not perfect maybe they'll fix some of that in some patches Okay, so I think you're probably getting a pretty good idea now of what the game is like. Adventures call to them. It's pretty easy to see if the gear is going to be better than what you have. Uh, the hide armor. I'm pretty sure hide armor is not... It might be worth picking this up, because I <laughs> happen to know I'll have a barbarian soon. <laughs> uh, same thing with that mace. You know, maybe that might actually be worth carrying around. Might be an upgrade uh, for a Miri. So look at that detail there. You can see the blood in front of that door. Yeah, that's a good sign. You see, if you see the the blood oozing under the door, you definitely want to run, rush in, right? Yeah, yeah. here's my familiar. Uh, check these things. Now you don't have to loot all the corpses. Uh, when you go to leave the zone, it'll pop up with a screen, and you can grab it then if you like. But just to be on the safe side, I like to check everything at least. And, you know, there very well could be some extra stuff here. I'm just not seeing because my perception isn't high enough. Let me just do a couple more battles and then I'll switch it over so you can see some of that kingdom management. Now, it'll be actually a lot. I got a long ways to go here before I will be ready to manage a kingdom. Uh, we have to find the stag lord. I think it took me about two days to get to the part where the kingdom management opens up. So if you just like the ball, if you just like this kind of gameplay, there's plenty enough to justify the uh, price of admission, so to speak. Does actually have a lot more... What's up with this cat? <laughs> you know, is that a glitch? Or is that an accurate representation of a cat? You know, maybe he's nervous. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe my uh, rat has kind of freaked him out. I don't know. He's just, like, running on a treadmill there. <laughs> you know, but I've seen cats do weirder things. Oh, here we go. This will be probably a good place to stop after this battle. It's the end for you rats. Hey, what are... Yeah. This wood is calling somebody a rat. A negative thing. Hey, wait for me. Okay, looks like I moved into the zone there. I don't think I'll be able to control a uh, Miri right away. Yes, he's doing that slow motion thing again. Uh, die, die, die. So I could... Let's see. So I could just keep casting Acid Splashes, 1d3 points of Acid Damage. That's just a cantrip. I could do the Dart, which is, uh... What does it tell me the damage? 
1d6 plus every two wizard levels, so basically uh, somewhere between 1 to 6. I think my, let's see, my composite bow is 1 to 8, so I'm actually better off using the bow at this point than trying to acid splash them, as far as I can tell. Let's see if he can actually hit anybody. <laughs> oh, they're dead already. <laughs> oh, it's you. Stay up from under my feet or I'll strike you down. Yeah. I think I'm gonna just yell that next time I go to Walmart. Just blood for Gorum! Go charging in. Barbarians. <laughs> I think that's exactly how heroes should. Yeah. What stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria, save me from such heroes. Always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of. I think that pretty much describes me. Okay, I'm gonna grab my part again. Let's see if they've got anything on them. You know, it never hurts to grab those pots. I kind of the word the, the poster boy for this having a thousand pots at the end of the game that you never used. Uh, actually, in this game, it is kind of nice to have the pots because sometimes you don't want to have to rest all the time. Rest back up takes game time. So if you have some pots, you don't need. You know, by the time you get a few levels, these light pots are going to be pretty uh, useless. But it's, you could use them to kind of touch up, save your spells. I check this guy. It's like big blue. <laughs> He's really cold, I guess. Must be from Minnesota. All right, let's get in there. Come on, come on. Time becomes distance. What is that? Padded armor? <laughs> I thought this was Lucille from The Walking Dead for a second. This club. I mean, look at that. Doesn't that look like Lucille? Yeah. Grab the club. Man, you see what I'm saying? I was like, you know, I'm just going to play this a little bit. <laughs> Already kind of hooked in. Uh, kind of having fun with this wizard. My other character's not a wizard. I don't have just a straight-up wizard in my party. I'm actually kind of having fun with that. Uh, so you can see this. Take, so if you look what's here, there's like some uh, broken up debris. It says dexterity. So what that's going to do is going to make a dexterity check. And I'm not sure if it goes with my character that has the highest dexterity automatically or how that works. See what happens. Looks like it's going to go with my main character. So dexterity check succeeded. You can see the results there. So I had to, I had to roll at least a seven. So I did that just fine. Let's just see who has the highest dex. 16, 16, 16. So I guess that would make sense. I'm kind of tied with Lindsay. Oh, there's some more assassins. Okay, one more battle. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's kind of have fun. Go ahead and turn my uh, bard song back on. She's also got cure light wounds if my dude gets too injured. He's got another magic missile left. And let's see, would it be worth doing the snowball? So this might stagger them. Yeah, why not? Let's try out the snowball. It's going to take three seconds to cast, so they might be dead bef before that actually lands let's see boom so where did that go oh it missed <laughs> well dims the brakes <laughs> now he's going to be up close and personal with me with his sword oh but he's dead okay are these guys attacking yeah okay miss 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 <laughs> got him crunch you know the sound effects are really good Love that crunch. Like a bag of chips, you know, you really want the, the crunch factor. That's a short bow. Not, I don't know if that short bow is going to be better than these uh, crossbows or not. I guess we can see that. Let's just do a quick check. I can't stop myself. So she's got leather armor. Uh, the padded armor's got a better dexterity bonus on it. Lower arcane spell failure chance. Probably not going to be as good. Yeah, see, I don't want to lose that point of AC. Let's see, what else did I pick up there? A short bow? 
Uh, so again, it looks to me like the short bow gets a little better critical hit chance. It doesn't go as far. It's actually 40 feet instead of 10 feet. So I think I'd rather have the range than that, than this, that little bit of extra damage. That's kind of how I'm seeing that. What is that? A spia? Okay, anyway. Uh, this, there's a lot more to go here before we get out of this and get the full party. Uh, it's a really fun puzzle. I wanted to show you the puzzle, but I don't know if I'll be able to, to get to that anytime soon. Uh, it's one of those sort of switch-based puzzles. So there's a little bit of puzzle solving. It's not as many puzzles as uh, Bard's Tale. Uh, four from last time, but uh, I think the puzzles that are here are very engaging. You know, I'll probably spend as much time... You don't really have to solve them if you don't want to. You could just go on by, but... <laughs> Look at this rat. He, like, found a sunny spot in the room. Look at that. Uh... Uh, but they're still re really fun puzzles. Uh, but anyway, I want to get out of this and show you some of the later game, uh, especially that kingdom management scene, and I think that'll be pretty good. Uh, so I'll be back in another minute. All right, and we're back. Uh, so this is where I, well, this is what I was playing when I first started the video. As you can see, I got a full party. It's a little banged up. Ooh, a lot of treasure. Collect it all. Let me show you some of the characters we have here. Malagar, Harem. There's a Half-Orc, Berengar, and the Gnome. Uh, Octavia, Lindsay. These aren't the characters I always play with, but I find it's uh, kind of fun to swap them in and out. Just keep it from getting kind of stale. You got a Ring of Protection. See, these characters are pretty well equipped. Probably won't find any upgrades right away. Yeah, so you can see this guy's got this uh, Death's Door on him. So this is what I was talking about before. So it's not like he's wiped from the game. If he gets uh, dead again or below zero again, he will die. Then I'll have to reload. But if I can get back to village or my capital, rest up, he'll be okay. All right, let's see. And then this this is my main character for this. is uh, Madogar, neutral good human tower shield specialist. So he's kind of the tank of the party. And, I'm, you know, it's, it's pretty fun uh, being a, a tank-like character. Uh, the only problem is you meet another tank right off the bat. Okay, let's just do a quick battle with these guys. <laughs> uh, so, again, I could activate the song. She's actually got another... Uh, she's got a bunch of different songs at this point. What is she, like, level 10? So I'm, I'm, I'm only, like, halfway. <laughs> I mean, remember, this goes all the way to level 20. Uh, but, man, there's just a ton of stuff. Uh, she's got Inspire Greatness. Let's see. Two bonus hit dice. This will be easier to hit things. And uh, pl plus two competence bonus on attack rolls. Plus one competence bonus on fortitude saves. And it says, I guess you get temporary hit points. Uh, so it's kind of a choice, I guess, between that and your uh, Inspire Courage. Now let's just go ahead and try that out. She's also got a bunch of different spells. <laughs> spells! I am never wrong. Uh, he's got his uh, defensive mode on. Turn that off and turn on power attack. And the, uh, what is this? Cleave. So we don't know his AC, I don't think, at this point. So we'll see. If he keeps missing, I can change that out. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> this is a great cleric, this dwarf. <laughs> he's uh, very depressed or very uh, pessimistic, cynical. He's got some pretty fun lines. Uh, he's got all kinds of traditional uh, cleric abilities. He's also got Slay Living. I could try that. I don't think this is going to be a super tough battle. Any Maybe I should just save had. this stuff. Uh, the half works kind of interesting. A lot of his abilities... Uh, it's kind of like this mage hybrid thing where if he, he can put a, any a spell like a touch spell, like Chilling Touch, Shocking Touch, uh, he can actually cast that spell through his melee weapon. I'm kind of experimenting with it. I have to say it's not my favorite What's gameplay new? style, but it's something different. Uh, there's my gnome. He's the alchemist, so he's got all these bombs he can throw. I won't let you down. Uh, she's the, I think, a wizard-rogue combo. Yeah, rogue and wizard. Actually, a pretty, pretty fun character. Adventures call to that. Well, let's, just, let's just open this up and see what happens. And I'm not afraid. Let's see if they're able to uh, go through this thing. Yeah, see, I'm able to damage him. Uh, 21 damage. Uh, 
Boom. <laughs> you can see those bombs hitting. Now, I think the bombs do a little splash damage to me too, but that's okay. I actually have an ability on him that would make it so it doesn't splash, splash out as much, or not at all, but I don't find it to be a big deal. Oh, look at all the magic items. <laughs> Face me if you dare. Oh, what is this? Oh, there's, there's a cleric, so I probably want to kill him first, obviously. Now, this is kind of cool, too. So, the my cleric, I've got these channeling abilities. Now, so these are kind of AoE heals, or there's AoE, or area of effect uh, damage undead. There's several different channeled abilities. Uh, so, I think this is a nice complement to the regular spells. Uh, you can take feats to give you more. Uh, more of these channeling opportunities. I uh, probably don't want to waste it, though. Something else that's really cool, I think, about this game, at least with the Cleric, so instead of having to waste slots on, like, Cure Light Wounds, Cure Serious Wounds, I can actually just memorize whatever I want, and then if I click this little arrow here, it'll let me convert it on the spot uh, to something else. So Cure Serious Wounds, same level. That seems kind of a win-win. <laughs> so don't even bother with Cure Light Wounds or whatever. Well, let's just see what happens here. Let's see if I can activate this guy's ability this time. He's got Vampiric Touch wound up, but he can also use his uh, daily ability or rest ability, whatever you want to call it, to enchant his weapon up to one minute. Let's go ahead and do that. So that'll give him the, the equivalent, equivalent, I think, of a... Let's see, is it going to show it here? Let's see, plus one enhancement bonus for a minute. Let's see if he hits, and then we can see if he factors it in. You see what I'm saying? It's all about the stats in this game. If you love stats... Yeah, so there he's used his ability. Yeah, so it looks like he is getting that bonus. He missed anyway. Alright, but anyway, no problem, no sweat! I <laughs> didn't really ex expect there to be yeah, all kinds of enchanted stuff. Uh, so getting some great treasure out of here. And, you know, a little thing here, but the map... If you remember back in Baldur's Gate, you had to keep switching back and forth, back and forth. Uh, this, you can just, from the map, click on an area you want to go to. You see him running. Now, I think it would be neat if I could just click on that area exit button and just have it, you know, boom, go to the loading screen. Doesn't let me do that for whatever reason, but you know I do like being able to to click from here. All right, so anyway, I'll let me get out of this and I'll go to that kingdom management screen and show you what that part's like. Okay, so I kind of forgot about one part of the game. <laughs> Actually, a big part of the game uh, is the world travel. Uh, so instead of just going screen to screen, you actually have this overland view here. And you can see I can click various spots, and there's only so many days my characters can go before they get fatigued, and you have some rations and a little camp screen, but I'll show you all that. But I'm going to see if I can start heading back to my base, or my capital city, called Tuskdale. And don't you won't get this until, like I said, it'll probably take a couple of days before you get this far. So they're already exhausted, you know, carrying all this junk, too. Uh, so this is kind of like those uh, Conquistador games. If you played those, you've got a lot of options here. You could try to use rations if you wanted to be quick, but I'm not really in a big hurry. You can assign somebody to hunting, somebody to camp camouflage, keep you from getting attacked. Cooking. Uh, so this is how cooking works in this game. We have uh, all these recipes you can pick up. and uh, Every character, every, all the NPCs have a preferred food, a favorite food item that gives them a little extra bonus. Uh, so you can figure, out, figure that out. But everybody will get some kind of bonus, assuming you have the, the ingredients. So like this one gives you one temporary hit point per level for a day. You know, better than nothing. This one gives you plus 10 movement speed. Of course, the, the, better, the, the better the perk, usually the, uh, you know, the more expensive the ingredients, right? There's one that makes you not get exhausted as much. See if I can find that one. It's fish on a stick, unfortunately, I do not have enough butter. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't found more butter. Now well, let's just I think the hardy mill doesn't require anything. But it's got this it's the most difficult thing to do, so it probably won't work. 
And you can assign some people to watch over the camp to guard it. Uh, just in case you do get attacked, these people will be awake, I suppose, and able to wake everybody up. And you can decide whether you want to use your spells or natural healing. I usually just leave that alone. Okay, and then you just hit you, uh, begin resting. Just hope I don't get attacked. Usually the random encounters aren't too bad. At the very start of the game, I got killed a couple of times by random encounters, but usually it's no biggie. And I guess my guy's moving so slow because he's kind of in a mountainous terrain. Yeah, there we go. Looks like it's sort of speeding up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wow, they're already fatigued again. Wow. Okay, let's just keep going. You know, I really think this this is one of my sort of nitpicks with the game. I think you should be able to go further before you keep having to rest. Because, I mean, it's not all that much fun. And you just seem like uh, you see that too much. Oh, there's a random encounter. Okay. Might as well look at this. Oh, there's another loading screen. So I, got, I do have this installed on my SSD. So if you have it, you can see it's taking a little while. Not too bad on the SSD. If you have a regular hard drive, it might get more annoying. Oh, this looks like an actual... Uh, see, a small but well-armed group moves across the flatlands. Tattoos, leather, and fur, bone amulets at their belts. <laughs> These are barbarians! What a way to stereotype. Kellogg's, to be precise. Who are you, then? What do you want? Uh, there's my perception check. Now, one of your people seems to be sick. Can I help? Yeah, let's go with that. Now, we don't need your help. He's interrupted when one of the barbarian women begins coughing uncontrollably. And maybe the, maybe she's got the bug I had last week. Now, if you don't need it, just shut up. I'm not going to die for your pride. Yes, I'm sick. Caught, caught blue spit. Somewhere in the barrens. <laughs> Blue spit. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds pretty nasty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are tons of diseases. Uh, fun to be had at every step. So I can be a neutral good. Heal the barbarian. No charge. I can say pay up. Or actually I don't think I can help you. Well let's do the. Let's do the first option. No none of that. We're not beggars. We're not out for charity. Well, so she gave me some coins. So there we go. Thank you. It was a nasty thing, let me tell you. Won't let you take breath in or let gases out. TMI. I'm Nober. We're from Numeria, part of the Tiger Lords tribe. Blah, blah, blah. We don't want any trouble. Okay, so you could chat with them or let's just <laughs> leave. <laughs> We're probably supposed to chat with them some more, but... Ooh, look, there's some herbs. Sorry, Barbies. I'm going to come over here and grab these herbs. So, just herbs. <laughs> we don't know exactly what kind of herb it is. They didn't get that uh, granular. All right, get out of here. Go, go, go. Stop for the moss. <laughs> Edible moss. And look, there's something else. Ancient Cyclops is coming. Alright. Alright, so now we'll have to go back to the loading screen. And as I'm saying, sometimes this can get old. Keep loading in, loading out. But I'll show you where the loading screens are the worst. It's actually on the, the Kingdom Management screen. Which hopefully I'll be able to show you in a second. Come on. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually in my kingdom, uh, so it doesn't really show this too well, but uh, I can tell that just because I have this kingdom icon or kingdom button there on the lower right, so I must be within my zone. So I don't necessarily have to go all the way back to my capital. Wouldn't be a bad idea just because I need to heal up anyway, but I could just click here. Uh, so let me just show you this. So with uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, you get the sort of Baldur's Gate style exploration mode pretty traditional stuff, but they've added this uh, kingdom management uh, aspect to it. And I don't really find this as well done as the other part, to be honest with you. It's kind of based around these ideas of events and opportunities. 
Ooh, what's this? Rats, rats everywhere. And the capital is swarming with rats. <laughs> Rumors describe creatures the size of dogs and hunched figures roaming the catacombs. What is the reason behind this invasion? The situation must be taken under control, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so instead of getting the, the delightful experience of slaughtering these rats myself, I have to just assign it uh, to one of my party members or NPCs. And he could take care of it. Says they're in seven days, you get the difficulty check. Uh, you see what happens if he succeeds. Uh, so those are events. And the re events are kind of random. Some are problems, some are opportunities. Uh, so that's part of it. Uh, you can also rank up. Uh, so this is the kingdom. So you see here, if I spend two weeks, I have to go... Uh, yeah, this guy has to be available. Uh, but you can't just let two weeks go by and then you go to the next rank in Divine. Uh, so you got a lot of ways to rank up. You can say I'm already rank four, community, loyalty, military. Uh, so basically there's these points in the game where you've explored the map, you've got no real questing to do, so you come back and let a couple weeks roll by as you uh, upgrade or rank up in these different kingdom stats. Uh, so this is how I would do it. So you could say the trade agreement with Sertova is going to take 1,500 building points. It's basically the currency you use to build things. Don't have enough money, and it would take 60 days for that to work. So I probably don't want to do that. Uh, you can research these uh, various curses. You could try to claim a different region. Again, don't have quite enough funds to do that. It would take two weeks. Uh, but you can bring other... Uh, regions in, under your purview, into your domain. Uh, you can also hire, hire advisors. And this is kind of interesting because you can have an advisor who's actually in your party. So I think that's a little bit weird. Doesn't make a lot of sense. You could be wandering around the kingdom with one of these advisors in your party, but somehow they're still doing whatever the, the project is you assigned to them. It doesn't quite work for me. I think it'd make more sense if, if you just had all NPCs here, you know, for your advisors, or if you actually did have to let these uh, people out of your party for a while as they did their task. You know, either way, that would make more sense than, than this system. Uh, the other part of this is we are building little villages. So you take over a, a region, and then you could build a little village in it, and eventually if you do the, uh, uh, the ranks up, do the projects, you can turn them into... Uh, cities, eventually into cities. Uh, so here's what that looks like. Uh, this is my capital. So you see there's the loading screen. So loading screen to get to this, a loading screen to get to each town. And then when I exit out of this, there'll be another loading screen. And then if you wanted to do this, uh, if you wanted to check on all your villages and towns, that, you know, it's starting to add up uh, quite a few of those loading screens. Again, not, not, it's not like it's awful, unplayable. It's just a little bit annoying is one of the negatives. I really wish they could get away from this, having to wait, <laughs> having to clear the cache or whatever to load in. Just, I mean, why should this take so long? This should just be Instapop, right? Uh, so I can come here, let's see what I've built. You can see I still have some slots left. And you can figure out, do I need more stability? Do I need more community? Maybe you want more, uh, where is it? Uh, now one of these should be economy mansion. <laughs> a park. So there's a bunch of stuff I could build. There's a school. Yeah, here's the shop. So you can lay down a shop and you get plus one economy. And then you come in and upgrade it if you have a town. Or upgrade it again if you have a city. And it'll give you a little extra perk. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's fairly well done. You could put stuff down. Then there'll be a little time delay as it has to uh, build it. But the problem is you've only got a few of these building points. So I have 300 building points that I bought or collected. It never seems like you have enough of those to do what you need to do. And don't forget, you also have to use the building points for the uh, the missions. So I just never had enough. You know, not anywhere close to having this uh, these built into uh, big cities. You see, there's the, the loading screen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, so like five to ten seconds every time. But if you want to check on one of your villages, you can see that could probably stick a building in there, but I have to enter it again. Now, my biggest problem with this isn't really 
uh, the loading screens. I, I think they probably could have done a better job of integrating this component of the game with the uh, exploration mode. I felt like it was, it felt a little bit too much like two separate games. Didn't really feel tied together well enough. And one of the main things, one of my main complaints is basic. Well, I think it's probably be, goes beyond cosmetic, and I did see some other people making the same criticism. And it, it amounts to this. So you have to go through a lot to upgrade this town uh, from the village to the town to the city. But no matter what, it always looks the same. Uh, so let me go ahead and get my guys over there. So no matter what buildings you put into the town, uh, no matter if you upgrade from village to town to, to capital whatever, it's always going to look the same, and I just think that was a real, uh, a real letdown. You know, if you're going to make kingdom management such a, a key part of the game, you would at least like it to have it look different, right? So you can uh, kind of have this feeling of accomplishment. But you can see it, it looks different here. I can see all my buildings, but I can only, it's just always going to look the same. And once I get in here. So I'm really hoping that maybe in a future update or an expansion, if they do that, they'll go ahead and change this. Because I think at the very least, it should reflect uh, the buildings. It'd be pretty cool, right, if I could build a new shop, get to go to the shop, um, you know, be able to sell my goods there, have a, access to different kinds of shops. And there's just lots of, I mean, it seems pretty easy uh, to find ways to make that kingdom management a better fit with the gameplay. Give me more incentive to, to mess with it. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it's just going to be the same layout no matter what. Uh, so that's probably my biggest gripe. And again, not something I would say, well, don't buy the game. <laughs> you know, it's nowhere nearly that serious, but it just kind of feels like a missed opportunity. And I always say, uh, it's, the game, it's because the game is good, and if you like the game enough, that's when this kind of stuff really starts to, uh, to annoy you, because you, you keep thinking... Wow, you know, it's it's like this, but it could have been like this. <laughs> so I, I'm guessing they just ran out of money funds. They weren't able to do that. It seems a little weird. Uh, but anyway, uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker. I think this is a fantastic game. It's got a few little dry spots in it sometimes, but uh, overall I think it's, it's just really brilliant, really, really fun. Especially the first uh, couple days with it. I was just having a blast. <laughs> it's like, oh god, I don't want to go to work, I don't want to go to bed, I just want to play, play. And my friend uh, was same experience, we were kind of chatting back, back and forth about it. Uh, just really loving it. Uh, the Kingdom Management, not so much fun. It kind of feels kind of tacked on to me. It's, it's, it's not like it's terrible, but it could have been better. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, so let me just give you a breakdown here. Uh, graphically, I think it looks fantastic. You know, obviously it is kind of in that old uh, Infinity Engine style, so I can't rotate the camera around. I can zoom in and out at least. Uh, that doesn't bother me at all. I actually really, really like the art style. The graphics, everything looks great to me. The character animations look good. Uh, actions, you know, I can't complain. Maybe somebody that's used to, like, AAA, <laughs> who cares? It's, they're not trying to be the next Dragon Age, okay? Uh, it looks good. And so I go five out of five on that. Uh, the music, audio, visual, uh, audio, the music, fantastic, just as good to me as uh, the old uh, uh, Baldur's Gate games, Icewind Dale. You know, I go five out of five on it. Good voice work. It doesn't get repetitive. Uh, the uh, some people are knocking it. They say the story's not very good, or it's not a very original story. You know, your mileage may vary on that. I know a lot of people get really obsessed about a story. They want it basically a, a Game of Thrones uh, every time. Every game has to be Game of Thrones level of complexity, sophistication. I just don't agree. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's just not why I play games. I just don't care so much about the, the story. I mean, to me, it's more like this is my story. Uh, the story is I'm building up my kingdom. right? I am uh, amassing a fortune. I'm improving. Uh, the town into the city. I'm, I'm, I'm going on quests for my companions, bonding with them. Yeah, a lot of the story is probably taking place in my head uh, instead of on the screen, and that is fine with me. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. You know, so if you're expecting like a Dragon Age level of story and character interactions and big character arcs, you're probably not going to get that here. Uh, 
but to me it's fine. I'd go five out of five, uh, five out of five on it. Uh, again, if I want a story, I'll read a book. I'll watch a movie. Uh, the gameplay is the most important thing, and that's the next item. So it's kind of tricky with the gameplay. I would say five out of five, just in terms of the, you know, exploring the map, fighting things. It's a lot of fun. I, I love getting into like the minutia of the stats, the roles. Uh, so I'd go five out of five on that. You know, plenty of ways to customize. Uh, lots of uh, equipment to get into. I mean, look at all that stuff. Uh, you know, I'd probably go five out of five on that. Uh, the, uh, the problem is the kingdom management stuff, not as much fun. You know, I'd probably just say three out of five. If, if, let's put it this way. If there was two games they were selling and one was this, uh, the other one was... If they tried to make that kingdom management thing its own game, I wouldn't even bother with that. Uh, I wouldn't even play it. Now, you could just put it on automatic, not even deal with it. You know, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> kind of tempted to. Uh, but yeah, probably three out of five on that. So let's just say combine uh, four out of five total on the gameplay. Uh, let's see, am I leaving anything out? Now, I can't really think of anything, anything else. The interface is fine. Loading screen's a little bit of a problem, especially when you're going back and forth to the from this screen to the kingdom management screen to the cities and so on a little bit annoying uh, not a deal breaker uh, so anyway all uh, all in all i would probably want to go four out of five very close to a five out of five on this game uh, lots of fun your mileage may vary depending on whether you are are you know more interested in the story than just you know really detailed tactical combat of course you know me i, I like the tactical combat so it's, it really hits a <laughs> really scratches an itch for me uh, so anyway I highly recommend this game you can get it steam gog lots of places uh, if, if you're looking for something to play over that uh, holiday break uh, or if you just have some time uh, I'd recommend this it probably wouldn't lend itself so well you know if you are very busy you don't you only got like five ten minutes <laughs> to sit down with a game uh, you probably want something else because this will really get you get addicted to this pretty easily and you really need to have a few hours at a time to uh, to really get into it uh, at least that's my experience uh, so anyway pathfinder kingmaker uh, really great really looking forward to seeing what alcat comes up with next and uh check it out let me know what you think too <laughs> that's, all, that's all for this uh, month's episode. Uh, again, sorry about the delays on this. I've been sick and some other stuff, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to start putting out episodes in a more regular basis uh, again soon. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, 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 thank you for supporting this show, guys. Could not do it. <laughs> would not do it uh, without your help and support. Really means a lot to me. So thank you so much for that, guys. Uh, if you want to help out uh, and you haven't done so already, just please go to that link in the show notes to the uh, Patreon site. Uh, it just takes a couple minutes to set up an account. A buck a show, that's all I ask. It's uh, actually very little money, uh, but it goes a long way, and I really, really appreciate it. I do have to mention that uh, my GOG, a good old games, uh, uh, they've decided to cancel my affiliate affiliation with them. Uh, they didn't really say how. Apparently, they're just uh, eliminating all of their, I guess, underperformers. Uh, so I don't know really how that makes me feel, but I just thought I would tell you that uh, just in case you were looking into buying a bunch of games uh, through GOG and trying to support the show. I'm sad to say that won't work anymore. Uh, so you either have to use the Patreon site or you can, of course, uh, go to PayPal, uh, matchat.us, and just make a, a one-time donation. Uh, if you like. But whatever you do to support the show, I thank you very, very, very much. All right. <laughs> so, what about that news from the Mac Cave? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, I do have some news, uh, all kinds of news. Uh, uh, a bunch of stuff's probably outdated already, so I'll just focus on the uh, most recent stuff. Uh, uh, first up is a good old Stig wrote in about this Mage's Initiation Reign of the Elements preview teaser. 
Uh, this came out back in the, or the teaser rather, was released on the 30th of January. Wait, I got, had, that, had that completely wrong. Uh, the release date of the game is 30th of January, 2019. Now this is kind of a Quest for Glory King's Quest style game. It's a little bit of RPG, a little bit of adventure. It's about a guy named Jark, Dark, or d -Ark, his perilous journey across a medieval style land of Igonor. Brave the perilous bloodmark forest where the red capped goblins stalk. Trek across a barren desert wasteland rife with lawless bandits and fierce burrower, burrower, burrowers, fierce borrowers, had no burrowers. Navigate over a vast lake where evil masquerades as beauty. Ascend beyond the lofty mountain peaks where the mysterious and hostile flightarians dwell, suspicious of all outsiders. It is time for the Ark to prove himself. Three quests, one chance. Will Dark succeed and take his place among his fellow mages? A uniquely crafted RPG adventure game. And that, my friends, is uh, Mage's Initiation, Reign of the Elements. It looks uh, actually really good to me. Uh, go check it out. Uh, hopefully we'll get that out in uh, January. <laughs> you know, I missed Christmas by that much. Okay, another one. Now, this is a, a little game uh, that was brought to my attention by the developer himself. He was kind enough to write in, give me a key for this. this is, uh, Blago Vest Pinev, he says he's a lone indie developer and the only creator of the game Signal Simulator. He says, uh, I'm sending you a key if you have time to check the game. It's not for everybody, but uh, for mostly sci-fi geeks like me. That's why I started building this game. It is inspired by Sadie, a search for extra extraterrestrial intelligence. And your main goal is to maintain a science observatory using giant radio antennas to track and detect alien signals. Uh, so I know he's really working hard on this. He's got a bunch of patches out already updating it. It seems like a labor of love, and that's exactly the kind of project I like to support as much as I can. Uh, so go check that out. It's, by, it's on Steam for $19.99. And if you like math, space, exploring, and mystery, <laughs> you should check this game out. All right, and then finally, I've got something really fantastic here. I posted about this on the uh, Mad Chat Facebook page, but there's a game out, and this is coming uh, via Indie Retro News. It's called Aeon of Sands, The Trail. This is a dark and twisted dungeon crawler. Uh, let's see, it's by 2-Bits Kid. It's finally been released on Steam. And they say, uh, let's see, if, uh, it's uh, as if Eye of the Beholder was set in a post-apocalyptic landscape with flesh-eating creatures. Uh, so they uh, really like it over at Indie Retro Games. It's a, a grid-based crawler, but the big deal is that it's uh, instead of having that turn-based combat, it's real-time combat, a replayable story with multiple endings. Uh, actually, I guess you could consider the uh, games like Legend of Grimrock to have uh, real-time combat, too, now, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but anyway, if you've been looking for something sort of Eye of the Beholder-ish, uh, you should definitely check this out. Aeon of Sands. It's probably going to be my next uh, uh, next game when I finally get some time, thanks to the uh, holiday break. Uh, so just a few last things. I had some uh, some new games that came my way. This is uh, from Robbie, a great friend of mine, Robbie Sam, but a great artist, a very talented, great dad, too. All around, a great guy. Uh, anyway, I'm not just saying that because he sent me this awesome Might and Magic uh, book one. This is one I've actually been wanting to get on the shelf for a long time. I don't know. I hope he. Uh, I don't know where he came across this. I hope he didn't spend a lot of money on it, um, uh, just because these things can command very high prices. But anyway, I was very happy to get it. He uh, included. Let's see. I guess he got this from an antique store, Emma Creek's Antiques. Uh, so it's probably he probably did get a good a good price on that because sometimes those uh, antique stores don't necessarily know uh, the value of their of the games. Oh, it's got the manual in here, nice thick, appropriately thick manual. It's got a uh, let's see what is this? Uh, probably a map. Oh yes, 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 this lovely map of the land of Varn. Uh, so I actually used to think that Might and Magic One had come with a cloth map, but it was actually the uh, the printed map. And let's see, we've got, of course, the, the discs, the product guide. It looks like a complete, oh, wow. Yeah, it is a complete box set. even has the, uh, the graph paper. And as far as I can see, uh, they haven't even torn off a sheet of this lovely graph paper. I'll tell you, you know, you know, as much as I like auto mapping and all that, it must have been 
you know, quite the treat back in the day to, to, to get something like this, to have that graph paper, to do it all. And this is basically months and months and months of uh, great gameplay. Anyway, thank you very much, Robbie. This will find a nice spot on the shelf uh, as soon as possible. And then I uh, got a couple of things just for myself that I've been wanting for a while. Uh, one was Alone in the Dark. I actually got to talk about this game with uh, Adam Date and his friends from the Fragments of Silicon podcast. And it kind of occurred to me that it's, uh, I don't actually have a copy of it. Uh, so I wanted to rectify that. Uh, so I just ordered this off of eBay. And I, I don't know how. It's kind of a fragile box. There we go. Uh, so this is kind of fun. It comes with this little bitty little book. <laughs> Alone in the dark, so I'm not actually sure what this is, what the purpose of this is. It's got little pictures of uh, weapons and uh, little swords and bows. I guess this must have been part of the copy protection. Seemed like all the versions I've had were cracked, so <laughs> uh, I kind of lucked out too. They included the clue book. You know, I don't know if they realize this was uh, not part of the original game package, but the clue book got included with this. Of course, the manual. And here's something else that's kind of cool about this game. It comes with this, the Mystery Examiner. So they kind of printed out this uh, little fake newspaper. It's actually kind of a, feels like a sort of crumbling in my hand, so I want to be really careful with that. But there's some really nice little bonus items with this. Let's see if I can close this properly this time. You know, sometimes with eBay, you really have to stay on it. You know, you might see a game for a hundred bucks you know, one day. You come back two or three days later. It's like the same thing as fifteen bucks. <laughs> you just have to have patience, uh, keep coming back. And this was another one of those. I think I met, might have gotten this one for about fifteen dollars too. Uh, Wing Commander Four: The Price of Freedom. And of course, <laughs> main thing I'm interested in is the, look at the size of this box. Big, heavy thing too. Weighs about uh, I don't know. A good five or six pounds anyway. Big old box. Get inside here. You've got this. I uh, actually have this uh, like little CD holder <laughs> sleeves in here. I think it's how many discs is this? Six discs. I mean, they really meant business with this. Uh, now, unfortunately, this one doesn't have the manual and some other stuff, but they did include the uh, Origins official guide, which I probably would have rather had uh, than the manual anyway. Actually, that looks like. Yeah, so they just kind of stuck the uh, reference card in, in this. Uh, but again, really nice uh, nice production value on this. Um. <laughs> you know, I know I've said this many, many times, but part of being... Um, uh, you know, if you like these old computer games, it's one thing to play them, but you're kind of missing out if you don't have the box copy, if you don't have some of the materials, because this is about half the fun is just going through all this stuff. Anyway, so that'll do it for the news and for the uh, openings or whatever you want to call that. Oh, uh, what about that ale of the week? All right, so what do I have this week in terms of brew? Uh, this is a uh, it's a little set of uh, brews they've got uh, here at the local uh, shop. It's a it's from Insight Brewing, and they have this these various aged ales. They have this this is the bourbon. I think they also have an oak one and a cognac one. Uh, so I might try. We'll see how this one goes. Maybe I'll try the other flavors. Uh, let's see. No light escapes the gravity well. Uh, so the name of this is Gravity Well. And they include a little write-up on the back. Uh, Gal Galactic Sector uh, 29, Plural Z Alpha. Uh, kind of reminded me of that little uh, Sadie game. I turned my telescope to a small patch of sky that had eluded my view. A null space, devoid of stars or light, beckoning. The aperture yawned as I looked beyond our dimension into a cosmic knot dripping with a thick chocolatey stout. I needed this delicious looking star treat and resting against a fermentation vat, an idea alighted upon my expanding brain. What I really needed was a rocket ship. Okay, <laughs> I'm assuming that was written, uh, written under the influence of this very beverage. Uh, let's see, one pint, 9.4 ounces, 11% alcohol, crafted and bottled by Insight Brewing right out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. So fun little bottle, obviously going with a the sci-fi theme, and it's got the old Maker's Mark style, um, uh, waxy, whatever you call this, 
uh, drinking prevention mechanism on it. Uh, so anyway, let me uh, saw onto this thing and uh, let you know what it's all about. All right, here we go. I'm going to pour some of this Gravity Well bourbon barrel aged here in the rather excellent drinking horn. You know, while I'm thinking about it, guys, uh, hopefully next, probably next spring, I will be offering a course on video games it's called Understanding Video Games. And it will be uh, an online course. So if you wanted to, you could sign up for that course. You don't have to be a student at St. Cloud State. All right, so I'll let you know. If you're interested in that, let me know and I'll keep you apprised. I'm not really sure how much it would cost uh, for somebody out of the state or out of the country, but hopefully well within a million dollars. Wow, this just really smells fantastic. It's kind of a... Wow, that just smells really, really good. You definitely smell that bourbon, that sort of smoky bourbon-like cherry aroma. Very chocolatey, very sweet smelling. Just... Uh, Really, really pleasant aroma. Uh, no, nothing unpleasant, uh, fumes, alcohol, nothing like that. Just uh, smells really good. Very chocolatey aroma on this. Uh, let's give it a taste. Wow. That is... Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is great. Uh, very creamy texture. Really nice, sweet, chocolatey, cherry. Uh, that bourbon is just the right amount of flavor on that. Uh, just a little bit of a uh, smokiness on there, but really just a, a really great flavor. It's, it's uh, wow, I'm really, really impressed with this. I'm going to try this again. Wow, this is just really doing it for me. <laughs> you know, it's just like, uh, it's like they map my palate onto a computer there at this brewing. And they know exactly, like, just how much bitterness, just how much chocolate, uh, just how much bourbon, you know, just to, uh, really hit uh, all the uh, receptors in Matt Barton's uh, <laughs> brain. <laughs> this is just great. I'm going to try it one more time here. Wow. This is phenomenal. Really, really good. I'm, I don't know what kind of distribution these guys have. Uh, Insight Brewing, out of a, they're out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think I told you that. But uh, man, if you can get a hold of this, I'm actually really, really uh, proud of these guys. I mean, right here in Minnesota. Good grief! I mean, these guys are really, really expert. Uh, Insight Brewing. I might have to send them an email or something. I mean, this is uh, frankly better than a lot of the ones I've had out of like. Uh, you know, New York and <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> uh, wow, super job. Yeah, no question. Five out of five uh, drinking horns on this. The Gravity Well. If you like uh, bourbon barrel-aged uh, ales, I just don't see how you can go wrong with this one. Just completely nailed it. All right, so let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes about kingdoms and being a good king, uh, ruling. And of course, I came across uh, a few by Machiavelli. I wrote a little book called The Prince. My <laughs> favorite books. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the quote goes something like this. Uh, there is no other way for securing yourself against flatteries, except that men understand that they do not offend you by telling you the truth. But when everybody can tell you the truth, you fail to get respect. So ponder on that and see you guys next time.